where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Have you ever heard that Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet? He was one of many prophets called by God to warn his people of the coming judgment for their sin. But God also gave Jeremiah a tender heart, full of love for the people of Judah. Perhaps you know from experience the heart-wrenching sorrow caused by a loved one who constantly makes bad decisions that brings them closer and closer to bad consequences. You can warn them, but you can't make decisions for them, even when you can clearly see the canyon they're about to fall into. That's how Jeremiah felt. In chapter 8 of his book, he declares, My grief is beyond comfort. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Zion? Is her king no longer there? The people ask. Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. Jeremiah's reaction to Israel's sin is in chapter 9, verse 1. Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. He continues with a list of their blatant sins, adultery against God, lying, refusing to acknowledge God, slander, and all sorts of evil. He wasn't just sad that his people were being judged. He knew they deserved it. But he was lamenting because the people had turned away from God. They'd rebelled against the one who loved them with such a perfect love, who'd been so faithful and patient with them. I know I feel the same way when I see adult children of godly parents, people who were raised in the church and raised in a Christ-honoring home, turn against the Lord and rebel against their parents. It's so heart-wrenching. You know their parents mourned and lamented over them. This is true not only in the lives of families, but also in nations, just like in Jeremiah's time. As Christians living in the United States, we should feel the same way Jeremiah felt. Our country has left its first love. Not that all the original settlers in the colonies were Christians, but many were, and our nation was founded on biblical principles. But don't we see all the same kind of sins that Jeremiah saw in his nation? Haven't we seen the United States rebelling against the Lord and his word? then shouldn't we be mourning and weeping for our country? Shouldn't our hearts be broken for the lost and dying of our nation who don't know the Lord? Shouldn't we be weeping day and night for them? Well, if you're anything like me, maybe you're thinking, yes, I should be grieving over the lostness and rebellion of our nation, but it's not usually in the forefront of my mind. Well, perhaps we should pray that God would work on our own hearts first, to tenderize them as Jeremiah's was, to make us love what he loves, hate what he hates, and grieve over what he grieves over, which is sin. Only when our hearts are broken can we truly pray for our nation and for the world. As always, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to share a treasure, support this ministry, or get Carla to speak at an event, please contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.